Consider supporting the work of Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian by becoming a monthly patron. Your contributions will help keep the resource alive and support its mission. Visit patreon.com slash NAH blog to learn more and make a contribution of three, five, ten, or twenty dollars per month. Again, that's patreon.com slash NAH blog. You can start or stop anytime. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian podcast. I'm your host, Rolando Tompkins Jones. I'm a social worker, social justice educator, writer, organizational consultant, and now podcaster who works to build more equitable and inclusive communities. I am also an aspiring humanitarian. My experiences have shown me that in the process of working for social justice outwardly, it's also important for us to continue to critically examine ourselves, shedding attitudes and behaviors that are oppressive to make room for those that are more inclusive, just, and humanitarian. What is an aspiring humanitarian, you ask? When I say humanitarian, I don't mean humanitarian in the harmful sense of placing ourselves in the role of a benevolent hero who's there to swoop in and save others. I mean dedicating one's life, time, and energy to honoring the ways that our destinies are intertwined. It's about accepting the lifelong pursuit to become more humane to those around us, with the recognition that we lose important parts of our humanity when we allow and enable the suffering of others. It means acknowledging our many contradictions and complications and aspiring to do more, aspiring to do better. It means acknowledging that systems of oppression exist by design and not by accident and working towards an individual and collective transformation that includes an unshakable belief that our society's safety, viability, survival and ability to thrive is only as secure as our most marginalized community members. Since 2011, my blog, Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian, has been a place where I've written and curated content on issues of equity and social justice. Through using written word, film and video and other forms of media for social justice education, I hope to continue to expand and enrich the narratives about social issues that face our society and to find ways to take action while encouraging others to do the same. Today, the blog and now the podcast is for others who share a passion for that same journey. No matter who you are, where you come from, what your identities are, or what area of work you're in, there's room enough for all of us in this work. And I hope that engaging with the podcast or the blog can move you closer to discovering or reaffirming your answers to the questions that you may have about how you can best be of service. Thank you for choosing the Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian podcast. I'm your host, Rolando Tompkins-Jones. Have you ever heard the term positive vibes only? How are you impacted by that? Or have you ever heard messaging that only focuses on positive vibes only? Only positive vibes here, no negativity. You know, have you ever had those or heard, you know, messages that 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 prioritized the positive in that way when it comes to people expressing or or sharing, you know, perhaps that you might need help, perhaps that you're struggling, those sorts of things. So to be honest, I'm becoming wary and, and very weary of positive vibes only type messaging. I've found for myself that I don't need positive vibes only type messaging in in, in relationships in terms of seeking support. What I need is 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 folks who are able to to both hold space for and express a wide variety of complex human emotions. So one of my challenges with what I'm calling fake positivity thinking is that there's a really thin line between that and gaslighting. So for me, there's a point where the stuff about the law of attraction crosses into a uh, crosses a line really into victim blaming territory that offers really simplistic explanations for complex systemic problems. So for me, it's not just about self-esteem. You know, systems of oppression are designed to impact the lives of people with marginalized identities, regardless of how they might feel about themselves personally in terms of self-esteem, commitment, and whatever other traits are often used in false positivity thinking as a a deficit explanation 
for why individuals or groups aren't in a particular place in life. You know, used in such a way that uh, it crosses a line into, well, you know, hey, maybe, maybe uh, you you you're you're not working hard enough, or maybe you didn't want it enough, or maybe you don't believe enough, like those those types of things that are really simple explanations for uh, disparities, perhaps, and other things. But what's really happening? It's 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 a simple explanation for issues that are really really systemic and complex. So. Even thinking about this in physical, you know, personal relationships, as well as um, the virtual ones that we have online, you know, set your own boundaries. Use the black button, log off to the degree that you can. Do what you need to do to protect your own mental health and energy in light of whatever discomfort you might be experiencing based on what's happening locally and nationally, because there's so much happening locally and nationally. I think we can acknowledge the need to do that while also recognizing that not everyone can take a break or turn it off in the same ways, if at all. So I'm not in the business of of telling marginalized people, you know, those who are personally impacted by issues that other folks are only exposed to on an intellectual level at best, what's acceptable in terms of tone or action and and that sort of thing. You know, I say, let people rage and grieve and organize and heal, you know, let us tell our own stories. And then when that day comes that, you know, you might need some support or solidarity. My hope to you is that you're met by an individual or community who can hold space for and express a wide variety of complex human emotions. So rather than positive vibes only, my wish is that you have those opportunities and those spaces in which it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to, to seek support. It's okay to acknowledge that you are struggling and be met with affirmation and validation and not blame for that, especially when I'm, as, as we think of all of these social injustices that are happening right now, locally and nationally. That's my wish. That's my hope. That's my hope for for, for you. Okay. Thank you for choosing the Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian podcast. I look forward to engaging in the next episode. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a review and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. To find show notes for this and additional episodes, visit podcast.notesfromanaspiringhumanitarian.com. Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian is a labor of love and will continue to be. Consider supporting the work of Notes from an Aspiring Humanitarian by becoming a monthly patron. Your contributions will help keep this resource alive and support its mission. Visit patreon.com slash NAH blog to learn more and make a contribution of three, five, ten, or twenty dollars per month. Again, that's patreon.com slash NAH blog. You can start or stop anytime. Thank you for joining me this week. Take care.